Welcome back to Machines Incorporated. I'm Jake, and this is my 69 Chevy van. Today I wanted to do an overview on my Chevy van. Uh, this van's very important to me and wanted to showcase it to show you guys what's been done to it, the, talk about the history of it and a few other things. So starting off, this is a second generation Chevy van. Uh, the first generation had headlights in the middle here and a flat windshield. The second generation obviously has the lower headlights, a rounded windshield, and most importantly, has a doghouse or engine bay that's large enough to be able to hold a V8 versus the first generation could only fit the inline six. Now this van did come originally with a 250 inline six, great motor, they're, they're easy to work on, decently reliable, do enjoy them. But unfortunately I wanted a little bit more power out of it and to get speed parts for an inline six is very expensive. So cost wise, it just made a lot more sense to put a V8 in here. It's a pretty direct swap. Uh, it fit completely in the engine bay. Motor mounts are shared with the 250 inline six, um, mates directly up to the transmission and bell housing that the inline six uses. So initially drop that in, uh, decently easy process. Then the next thing I wanted to move forward to was making a four wheel drive. Um, initially, when my grandfather gave this van to me, um, I absolutely loved it. I wanted to restore it. And I was trying to race to restore it before he passed away. And unfortunately, I never really got to that point. But after he passed, I started taking a look at it and trying to think what I wanted to do with it and how I could spend my time with it. And I wanted to build it out as a camping overlander to be able to take out here to the beautiful Colorado mountains and be able to kind of, you know, cruise around, taking on some trips and camp out of it. So first thing that I needed to do for that was to make it four wheel drive. Um, and that's kind of where things snowballed from there. So. Uh, what we did is we took the drivetrain out of essentially like a 80s square body uh, pickup truck or a Suburban. So it's got a Dana 44 in the front. It's got a GM 12 volt in the back. Um, then it's got a TH350 automatic transmission and an MP205 transfer case. Um, so decently reliable drivetrain for just running 31 inch tires on here will be plenty reliable. Carrie and I put the V8 in it. It's a V8 from Jegs, pretty basic four bolt main, small block 350, um, has a Holley Sniper EFI system on there and uh, drops in and mates to the motor mounts that the inline six use, so pretty easy swap. Um, we had actually dropped the motor out of the bottom and then put the V8 up in through the bottom. It's a little bit easier than pulling it out through the top. You can, but getting an engine hoist inside the van as well as uh, the V8 going down in that doghouse, you'd have to remove the heads and a few other things to actually drop it down in. So through the bottom was a lot easier. So I wanna talk about the history of this van. My grandfather bought this van brand new in 1970. He bought it for a typewriter repair business that he owned called Machines Incorporated. Um, hence the name of this YouTube channel. Hence you'll also see it as a license plate on the back of the vehicle. Uh, my grandfather meant a lot to me and this van means a lot to me and I wanna keep that legacy going. So he bought this for a typewriter repair business. This is essentially used for the business to run, you know, basic errands, also to run and pick up typewriters, bring them back, repair them, and then drop them back off of the businesses. After he started to get a little bit older, the business did dwindle down. Obviously typewriters went out of business a little bit, but he did love this van, so he always kept it around. When I was younger, uh, this is actually the first car that I ever drove. I think I was 12 or 13 years old, and he asked me if I knew how to drive a car. Obviously the answer was no. And uh, so he took me outside and said, you're gonna learn today. And we hopped on in. The first thing he did was take me to a big steep hill on his farm and make me come to a complete stop and start up that hill. At the time, the van was a manual with a three speed on the tree um, and with that 250 inline six. And I thought that was the hardest thing in the world to drive manual. I thought, how could anyone drive a vehicle like this? But uh, later on down the road, my first car was actually a Subaru WRX. Um, I learned to drive manual, got very confident with it. And so later on, I asked him, I was like, hey, can you know, I go back and drive the van again? I would love to you know, prove to myself that I've kind of earned it and, and learned how to drive and get a second chance. At the time, he unfortunately was pretty close to the end of his life. 
Uh, and when I asked, he looked at me and said, do you want to have the van? At the time, I, I didn't exactly know too much about cars, so I didn't know if I could take it on and you know, be able to repair it and keep it running. And at the time, it wasn't even running. I mean, it had been sitting for years. Um, but fortunately, uh, one of my best friends, Kerry Lisnick, uh, he knows a bunch about cars and at the time was actually working in a shop. He told me, yes, absolutely get it. We'll figure it out and get it running and we'll drive it around. Um, so this vehicle has as much of Kerry's work in it as myself. I can't thank Kerry enough. Um, he has put more blood and sweat in this vehicle than anyone else. Um, so appreciate you. But yeah, so Kerry went with me to go pick it up on a trailer, um, brought it back, got it running. And at the time, my initial idea was to just get the van running. I wanted to, you know, fix up the inline six that was in there. I wanted to kind of restore everything, get it clean and show my grandfather that it was, you know, clean and ready to roll. And unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to do all that in time before he passed away. And after he did, I, I kind of sat back for a minute and took a look at it and was like, what am I going to do with this van? You know, what, how could I use it? And essentially, I decided that I wanted to make it, you know, this four wheel drive kind of camping over landing rig where I could go on, you know, some light camping trips, be able to sleep in the inside of it. Um, also, I'm a big mountain biker, so I could throw the mountain bikes in it and take it for a mountain bike trip on the weekend. Um, so that's where kind of the idea was born for this. So the color of this van is called Anvil. It's actually a color off the newer Jeep JK Willys editions. Um, I did make the joke that if I painted it or if I put any part on it from a Jeep, that that was going to be the first thing to fail. And unfortunately, there is some issues with the paint, um, but I attribute that to myself and not actually going through and prepping everything probably the way I should have. Most of this van did go down to bare metal because I just didn't know the history of it necessarily as there was some spray paint in certain areas and, you know, it was a work van. It had been through some. Um, so, yeah, got it all painted. All the emblems and door handles and everything, I did get powder coated black. Uh, the mirrors on here, these are off of a square body truck. Um, originally it had a little bit larger rectangle mirrors, but they didn't fold back and forth. And being able to hit some trails, I wanted to, if a tree or a branch came by, for these to be able to collapse out of the way. Um, plus, these are super easy. If one of these ever broke, I can get a replacement super you know, cheap and easy. The wheels on here are uh, Mickey Thompson Classics with Hercules all-terrain tires. Um, Hercules did hook me up with these tires. So far, they've been great. Balance out decent. Uh, you know, they roll pretty quiet on the highway and great traction on, you know, mild off-road. We do have right now a side pipe. Um, the exhaust is pretty much a straight-through exhaust. That is one thing that I do want to change in the future is making it a little bit quieter. Uh, it has a little bit of drone on the highway, so I want to make it for longer road trips, a little bit quieter, and also just so my neighbors, every time I crank it up, they just don't hear this thing shaking half the houses. The roof racks on here are from Thule. Um, they're simple, just like gutter clip-on style, um, and put these up here to be able to mount the awning that's on the other side. But also, if I ever want to put bikes, kayaks, anything up on top, just makes it easy to mount all those accessories. So in the back, you can see the machines incorporated license plate. Uh, these are still the factory bumpers that are on here. Eventually, I would love to fabricate uh, so a swing out setup for this. So spare tire on one side, um, maybe like one of those aluminum boxes on the other side to be able to store some recovery gear and things like that. Um, and also to have just actual rated recovery points that are on here. Uh, this van actually is a unibody. Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, what chassis did I put it on when I made it four wheel drive? But essentially I just took, uh, it, it's a uniframe similar to like a Jeep Cherokee XJ would be. So all of the suspension mounts are welded onto that uniframe. Uh, haven't had any issues yet. I don't plan to wheel this thing super hard or rock crawl it super hard. So I'm not really concerned about anything breaking down there. But eventually we'll probably do a little bit of plating on the frame. Uh, I would really like to put some rock sliders on here as well. I would hate to come down and crumple up a corner of the van. All of the windows are original in here. Uh, all the gaskets are from a company in Canada. I got lucky and found on a forum a company that makes replacement gaskets for all this. And all the doors, windows, hinges, everything was all removed when the van was painted. The taillight housings and everything are all new. Um, it is impossible to find any parts for a 69 Chevy van, but a lot of parts interchange with other Chevy vehicles. So I was able to figure out these are actually the same exact uh, taillight lenses that are on a Suburban, like a square body Suburban, and same thing for the reverse lamps. 
So was able to figure that out, get some new ones on there, as well as like the side markers that are, out, that are on here. Now coming around to this side of the van, uh, I do have an ARB awning on here. This has been great for camping, uh, just to roll it out, get a little bit of shade or, you know, a little bit of protection from the rain if it's coming down. Um, super nice little area here. Um, we can open up the doors. If we have camp set up that's inside, a bed inside, super easy to hang out in there, hop out, have a little shaded area to kick it. This van is pretty rare for the Chevy vans that in it has windows along one side and it has a panel along the other side. So there was two versions of this van. There was the work version and then there was the sport version, I believe it was called. The sport version was used for as a passenger hauler. So it had uh, bench seats in the back where you could haul multiple people. That one would have windows all the way around the van. The work ones were generally a panel van. So it would have the front windows. It might have windows on the side doors, but the rest of it was a full panel. Uh, my grandpa he didn't know so i'm unclear of why this van is half window half panel um, but honestly it's super nice having one side that is panel and blocked off so you can kind of pile stuff against that side and then windows make it nice from the driver's seat i can look back over and actually see a lot of the blind spots over there so pretty cool and unique on the emblems here uh, it is the chevy van 108 so this is the longer wheelbase that they offered it's a 108 inch wheelbase uh, they offered, I think the other one was a 98 inch wheelbase that they offered. Um, so a little bit longer. I mean, it's definitely pretty short. Turning radius is great on this thing to be able to zip in and out of parking lots. Uh, you know, be a little bit easier if it had power steering, but it's not too big of tires to turn on here. All right, so crawling up inside here. Uh, these are actually the original seats. Um, I do have the original receipt for this van and the passenger seat was an add-on, the rear view mirror was an add-on uh, and the seat belts were an add-on. So big luxury items. Um, the seats, the driver's seat is actually pretty darn comfortable. The passenger seat is about at a 90 degree angle. So that one isn't as comfortable. I would love to replace these at some point in time. It's a little tricky to find seats that fit well though, because the section where the seats are is actually very narrow because we have this guy here. This is the dog house or engine bay. So this is what houses that 350 V8 that we have. Um, we'll go ahead and open it up. So do have some insulation up in here. Um, in the summertime, definitely the dog house can get pretty hot. Um, this is just a universal aluminum radiator. Uh, that's off of JEGS as well. Um, got the biggest one that I could fit in here. I've never had an overheating issue. And honestly, I'd probably prefer to put a smaller radiator because this one actually sticks down a little lower than I'd like it to. Uh, just off-road, I wouldn't want that to catch on something, possibly damage the radiator. Uh, the engine, like I said, crate motor from JEGS. Uh, it's a crate 350 with a four bolt main, has a few Edelbrock goodies on it and the Holly Sniper EFI. Um, and then has a uh, eight rib belt kit from C VCF Racing or VSF Racing. I'll have to look that up. Um, overall, been pretty darn reliable. Um, I need to do a little bit more tuning with the Holly EFI system, but it's decently plug and play, gets you around without any issues. And it has just a basic dress up kit from JEGS as well. Um, so just, you know, the valve covers and the um, air cleaner intake here. Uh, and it has an electric fan uh, that's just on a thermostat switch, so it kicks on at 170 or 180, I believe. Um, and yeah, like I said, never had any overheating issues. The van, this is the old three-speed shifter. Generally, I just put it up here and kind of click it out of the way. Um, like I said, would love to make that a four-wheel drive shifter at some point in time. I currently don't actually have a four-wheel drive shifter, um, so I either just have to hop out and lock the hubs, or I have to actually hop underneath the car and move the shift rails. Uh, the shifter is a B&M shifter. It's a ratchet style shifter. Um, this is kind of the easiest setup when swapping in the automatic transmission because it is cable driven. Uh, it's a little tricky putting some parts and pieces in the vans since the engine is behind you. Um, things like throttle cables and like shifting linkage and you know that uh, transfer case shift linkage is a little bit tricky because generally the engine's in front of you and it's a lot shorter run. With this, everything's way behind me. I mean, the, the transfer case and transmission are five feet behind me. Um, so it does make it a little tricky to set that stuff up sometimes. Past that, uh, have the stock gauge bezel, did put an aftermarket uh, RPM gauge in here. 
Uh, I probably am going to end up changing out all these gauges at some point. Most of them don't really work anymore. I've tried to refurbish them, but they're kind of at the end of their life. I have a Pioneer uh, head unit here with Apple CarPlay and all that kind of stuff. I also have some Rockford Fosgate speakers in the back. Um, and then up here is just a couple of basic like USB outlets to be able to charge your phone and all that kind of stuff. The roof and floor is all completely covered with Dynamat, trying to get this thing quieted down a little bit. Um, it definitely does help to reduce some of that kind of rattling noise, but need to do a little bit more work, possibly with some additional weather stripping in the doors um, and changing out that exhaust to make it as quiet as possible. Um, do have this sweet horn. Um, not the loudest in the world, probably going to put a different one on at some point, but it's cute. Uh, yeah, and then all the panels on here. Um, these handles are actually all the ones that came with the van. I don't know if they're original. I'm assuming they are. Um, but yeah, painted all the interior to match exterior with black accents and uh, do have flip out windows on the sides as well. There still is a lot of work that I want to do to this van. Uh, unfortunately, when I originally built it, um, I was moving away at the point in time and I couldn't bring the van with me. So I kind of rushed to get it running and get it all thrown together before I took off and it sat for a couple of years after that. Now that I'm back with it, uh, I'd love to go through and kind of clean up all those last minute things that I slammed together. Um, and fix it all up and just get it running good, get it reliable and all those good things. If you guys did enjoy today's video, really help out if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Especially if you do dig the van, there's gonna be a lot more videos featuring it moving forward. Gonna be doing some fabrication on bumpers, exhaust, make some custom cross members, all sorts of things like that. So stay tuned if you wanna see a little more content featuring the 69 Chevy. My name's Jake with Machines Incorporated and as always, thanks for watching.